For some time now, the bluefin bite has been on the rise throughout the Northeast, and few places along the eastern seaboard have seen it as good as Cape Cod. On today's shoot, the plan was to head out on our 32 regulator under the cover of darkness, so that by the time the very first light began to appear on the horizon, we would be sitting on the tuna grounds. We plan to meet at East Marine in Falmouth Harbor and start loading our gear, ice, food, and every bit of tackle that would equip us for a day of jigging and popping for tuna. With the tanks topped off, both Yamaha engines fired up, and the Simrad radar now spinning, we were off the dock heading out. Once underway, we were at the mercy of our electronics to detect everything, even down to the lobster buoys that dotted the waterways throughout Vineyard and Nantucket Sound. Do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. There's two, there's two under the boat. Holy <laughs> Chris. Screen loaded with tuna right now. Where? Below us? Yeah, below us, but close enough to hit a popper. We're in it, man. Holy Christ. I want him, I want him, I want him. Man, we literally just got here and saw a massive pod of dolphins. And we were looking at that, admiring that. Thought, you know, life attracts life out here. So they were throwing poppers. There's two. Chris is on. Oh my God. Nope, just dropped him. Nope, back. <laughs> Chris, you might have to tighten that drag some. So, anyhow, saw all the dolphins and these guys started throwing poppers. I took a look at the screen. Absolutely. Just loaded, loaded bluefin. Drop a jig, two pops. Chris dropped the jig, came tight just real quick on his first drop. And this feels like the size we're looking for. Is that recreational tight, size too? Tight. Chris is on. Oh my God. The sun has not even left the horizon. We're already hooked up. It was hard to keep the jigs away from the 73 inch fish. This oftentimes left Jimmy, Cheech, and me hanging on for dear life, having brought a knife to a gunfight, which left us on the short end of the stick more often than not. This is a big fish. There you go, mine's turning. My guy just came to the surface. Oh my, Chris, you look at the screen right now. That is, that's every tuna in the ocean under us. Is that me? Did I get sharked? No, that's 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 independent of me. That's just a blue shark cruising. Put that cleat down, Jimmy. Did it break off? It broke off, I think. Sorry, we got plenty of jigs. Uh, well, I just I just lost mine. My hook just yours broke. It chafed through the assist hook cord. Tight. Oh my god. Literally, I broke one off. I dropped one, hooked up again, fought that thing. It was too big a fist for that rod. It just kept going, never stopped. Thing took 150 yards of line, never stopped. Switched over to the Ron Z, so now I'm fishing advanced. Oh. Still marking an insane amount of tuna. We got whales all around us. There is just tuna like you haven't seen in years out here. Screen is covered.
Wow, the whale just came clear, clear out of the water. Jimmy, kick the boat. Clear to the right. The same angle you're on right now. You got a whale going underneath the boat, Phil. Hold on, Jimmy, don't move yet. This, this whale's gonna come right across my line. Chris, we were just tripled up for just a little bit. Jimmy, I just rubbed the side of a whale going under the boat. <laughs> This guy is not stopping Jimmy on that drag. That might be the wrong kind. That might be the that might be a little bigger than we want. Jimmy, we gotta go. This thing's gone. All right, all right. We just we got boats all around us hooked up. I'm, I'm He's trying. gonna spool me. Gone. All right. It's all right. It's all right. We're getting our shots. We're gonna we're gonna get one. Jim, I think we went too tight. He wasn't far either. He was moving. He was taking line when he wanted. It just. We're 0 for 3, boys. 0 for 4. Man, this just shows you what an incredible fishery and the fisheries we have here in the Northeast. I mean, we've got bluefin tuna here. We're targeting them on light tackle. We've had, had some gear breakage, um, you know, rods, lines. But, you know, if you're going to do this, it's going to happen. I mean, you're testing the limits of what's possible. Oh, on the drop right there. All among the whales. No tuna on the screen right now, but they're just kind of coming through, moving around, eating all these sand eels. Tight, tight. So the first one we hooked up with, Chris and I, were both using the Shimano. Um, this is a Shimmerfall jig, and it's a real slender jig. It's a, it, it's a great imitation of a sand eel, which is the primary forage for these tuna out here. And uh, one of the nice things about these is they've got a lot of detail in them. Um, you've got that, th this is the sand eel color right here. And uh, so this is this has been a hot jig, this style jig, this uh, long, slender, fast sinking jig. And this is a Ronzi. This is what Chris hooked his last two fish on. And uh, these are a classic, great sand eel imitation. You work it a little bit slower, stays in front of the tuna for longer. Gone, gone. One downside of the Ronz versus the metal is the metal's gonna sink real fast. You have the Ronzi on, and that takes a, a good deal longer to get down, which is your friend once it's down there. But when you're seeing fish, and you're trying to get it in front of them quickly, that's not ideal. Right now, you almost just, oh, there we go. A couple of nice ones coming in. Good school. Big school, big school. Down toward 200 180. feet. Get down there, boys. Here they come, here they come. Here they come. How deep? 100 feet down? 100, between 100 and 120. Here come those dolphins. That's when we first saw that first crazy school was with these dolphins. That, that first school looks juicy. Look at the school we're into now, boys. We are into the mother load. Man, the tuna are right below these dolphins. So right now out here fishing, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. There's just that many fish. And I think that when is gonna be this guy right here. Tight, boys, tight. So far, this guy's cooperating, Jimmy. It's good, it's good. Oh, oh, I just bumped a limb. Kiss of death just saying that. Oh, oh man, you see that whale so come all the way out? What? That's gotta be a sign, Not Jimmy. Every, I think it's a sign, it's, it's blessing this fish. You know what, we've been horsing a lot of these fish. We're gonna just slow it down. Oh! Cheech, keep going, keep going, Cheech. Jimmy, come in for a minute. Oh, you want me to take it? Yeah, yeah go ahead, take it. Guys, one thing about tuna fishing, right? We've hooked up six, seven fish. 
We fought them, a few of them. We haven't really had one on for more than 10 minutes, but the thing with tuna fishing is there's no shame in using a buddy system to land these fish because one of the things you want to do, if it's the wrong one, or you've already hit your limit as far as what you're bringing home for the dinner table, no point in fighting this thing for two hours. He's gonna make a run underneath you, so be ready. There he goes. He's under the boat, Cheech. Oh, we got color, we got color, we got color. As soon as he turns the other way, I'm gonna reel up on him. There he comes, boys. He's into a turn. I'm gonna, when, on the turn, I'm gonna get lined. Yeah, I'm gonna get him right there now on the reel. Reel, reel, get it. you got to turn here, you got to turn, yeah? <sighs> you got another turn, yep, yep. He's got one, one more turn in him. I know. Here you go, here, I'm gonna be able to get him, yep. Let's see. Oh, no, okay. All right, all right, he's tired, he's tired. We had him right there, he's so close. He's close, he's gonna to come to the boat even faster this time. Get that line, keep that tight. A little standoff right now. He's gonna go in that circle again. Drop and get another crank there. And then just hold him at the bottom of the circle. And as soon as he comes to the outside, lift, drop, get a crank, get a crank. I will. You got the leader on the rod. We dominate his head here, Chris. Okay, it's okay. He's only, that's, those are inches, those are inches. Just hold him. Okay, he's changing direction. He's 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 gassed. He's gassed. Ready? Ready? Get him in. Great. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! I'll tell you why. So what? Well, this guy right here gave us a good fight, and I don't know what he is. 50. We can check. You know what? We've got a tape. Let's do a tape on him. The problem is, if you got anywhere near the second half of the water column, yeah, you went into giants. We probably hooked four or five giants. So obviously, if you're not sure of a fish's size, you're going to measure it in the water, get next to the boat, and hold it there. But the way you measure a bluefin tuna is something called curved fork length. And what that means is you're not laying this fish flat on a ruler. You're putting the ruler flat on the fish. So lower jaw, right across the pec fin there. And Chris, do you mind holding this at the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fish's mouth? Yep. So this on. is probably close to a 50-inch fish right here. That's what I'm thinking. Go it goes ahead. across the pec fin like this, and you're laying it flat. The curve of the fish's body to the fork of the tail right there pretty much dead on 50 inches. So this, in the recreational regulations, this would be considered an over. So this is an over bluefin tuna. This is, we're allowed one of these a day. Now, if we wanted to, we could keep two under 48 inches. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna hook any like that. We'll make that decision when we get to it, but any fish over this, over 48 inches, we have to release for the rest of the day, and we have to leave it in the water when we release it. But right now, we're gonna take care of this fish, bleed it out, toss it on a tail rope over the side, and, uh, and we're still marking fish. Cheech wasting no time getting the jig back in the water. Guys, we've been given a gift with these bluefin tuna. We really, truly have been given a gift the last three, four, five years. And with the striped bass fishery falling off, it's, it's you know, our job to make sure that we take only what we need and no more than that. I know a lot of guys that were recreational striped bass fishermen and now into this tuna bite, because this is a great fish. You can come out here and fight this on on gear that's slightly bigger than big bass gear. But the thing to do is only take what you need. Don't take any more than that. Going back to the dock with three recreational fish, two under, 47 and one over, chances are you're gonna feed the entire, you know, zip code in your neighborhood and beyond. And there's no point to it, especially with the amount of fish that are out here. So we've got a 50 inch fish. If we did get one that was in that 40 inch fish, you know, that decision we'd make if we caught it, but guys, the bluefin fishery right now is as good as it gets in the Northeast, and it's been for a long time, and our job is to make sure that these fish are around for a long time. You know, I got grandkids now, and I want these kids to be able to come out there and enjoy this as well. We hooked a lot of Volkswagens, and there was just probably little to no chance of, of stopping some of these fish that we hooked, because there's giants all throughout here, and, and there's fish six, 700 pounds, and uh, you know we're trying to do it on light tackle with the hope of, of getting the right one. This is the right one. What Cheech is doing right there is we're putting that fish on a tail rope to bleed it out over the side. Tuna have a uh, 
a lot of blood in them. And if you're going to take that home to yeah, eat, which we are, so you want to bleed that fish. It's going to be the best, uh, best for the meat. So we're going to hang that over the side so we don't bleed them in the bottom of the boat, create a giant mess. And uh, we'll rinse off the boat and we're Wait, still seeing yeah. fish, man. Look at them coming through, Cheech. Yeah. Right one, too. Quick. Look at this right here. These are all tuna. Everything in here is tuna. There's just life everywhere. I've seen a lot of marks. And man, it's been pretty, I mean, they're feeding hard. Like when you see them on the screen, generally you're hooking up and there's, I'm looking at multiple boats around us all hooked up. Nice. Were you on the bottom or? This is right here, I think. I don't put on these gloves for anyone. She's putting the wood down. Color, look at all the sand deals. He's still green, that's, he that's, is green. That's an under there. Oh, Cheech, nice job. Cheech, that's a big fish. He's gonna make one more run, but this is it. I grab that one when he comes around again. Jig will be a perfect handle for you, Chris. Oh, not the again. The rod broke. Okay, this is end game now. He swam right off. Jeez, Jesus, way to put the wood to him. He never had a chance. Never gave him a second to... Nope, he never had a chance to... didn't want him to know he was in a fight. He didn't know. I think we should continue to move east a little, I mean west a little. We're losing the life of the fish. Yeah, They're here, less. but I think they've moved in, in a little bit. There's definitely less activity than we were seeing. All lines in? Yeah, everybody's pushing that way, resetting. That's that's a mess of them down deep. That's Those a are, lot of fish. That's a, they, a lot of fish. Do you think there's any chance they're they're all? Do you think they're all big cheap? Do you think there's some smalls in there? I think the ones we find in the 100 to 150 are smaller fish, and I think we can make a living on them. Jimbo, look at the ones on the top. You're on hook one on that. There's, they're up, they're up high. Oh man. Oh wow. Right under the boat. Down a little bit, he's gonna come right at us now. He's coming across our bow. Jimmy, yeah, let's just work this fish. Cheat, you gotta go. I got we'll it. Wait man. for him to slow on, then we're gonna go. He might want to start angling toward him. Yeah, Cheat, yeah. Cheat, he, he's there. lying. He's gonna get lying back. Once this just guy, real, once just it, real. This, you, don't, you don't need to go that fast. Once the trolling guy goes, gets past, once we can get through him. 
I think this fish is not very deep out there, so if we can kind of run at him and keep getting lined, it's just going to make life easy. Out. He's up high. He just did a turn and did one of them. Cheech, come around a little bit to the port. He's just sitting out there. We're kind of motoring. Coming up. Get ready to take some line. There he is. There he is. There he is. He's close. He's close. <laughs> Let him stay there. Don't go too quick. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, under the straight boat. Straight out. No, straight out. Here you go. You're good. Stay right where you are, Cheech. You're good. This fish seems like it got another life. Oh, he's 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 wearing out. Uh, I mean, I want to keep this bend in the rod because that's what's putting the heat on him. That and the drag. So if I have the rod pointed right at him, then it's only the drag putting the, any pressure on this fish. So the, the deeper the bend in the rod, the more that fish is feeling it. You want to do it? I'm going to take it for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got Cheech. Got it? Yeah. Color. Yeah? I'm not going to let him go anywhere. Best time. <sighs> I'm not letting him go anywhere. Was, it, was he sitting like 50 feet no, away I, all that I, time? I, I was heat. about to say, how, much, how fast did you get him in? I put some heat on him. Yeah, here comes the leader. <laughs> oh, I'm worried that was going to happen when we got close. It's OK. It's OK. He's coming up. He's coming up. Oh, you I think it's shot all the way down. He was so close. He was right there. I definitely was leaning on him, but I was letting the drag do it. I was no, pushing well, down as, on this. As soon as, the, as soon as the top half of the rod was out of the equation, there was no, we, we lost a lot of give there. So as soon as you lose the top half of the rod, there's no cushion. You're on a tight leash there, and then lost the top half of the rod. That fish just popped it right then. Like it was. That sucks. We were just about to get that fish. That fish too. was there. That was uh, thing was there. He's he, done. He was do one turn, man. I was in. The, I, I, I had the leader. As soon as he turned back, he went. Was doing it on his side. Yeah. Like, did everyone break a rod today? I've heard several. Everybody did. Like I broke three rods today. I broke two rods today. That's what it is. Chafed off. We just got him, man. As soon as, it, as soon as we lost all that give, just thing went. Oh. I wanted to see that. Well, we saw the fish. We had the leader, but... I put it in the high 70s to mid 80s. I, I think it was a pretty good one. Caught fish. Taught the leader. Yeah, we... Uh, Doesn't feel like caught fish. We, right? we came out, man, and we had... I, I definitely think I want to come out here with some heavier jigging rods. But uh, we, we did pretty good. I mean, we were well equipped for the 50-inch fish. Uh, the, the giant's a little undergone. That, that fish was definitely high 70s, low 80s. Having hooked, fought, lost, and landed multiple tuna over the course of the day, it was time to head for home while reflecting on the fish we landed and the ones we lost. For anglers who have ever fished for any length of time, it's the fish we lose that often end up being the focus of our attention when back on shore. For now though, we'll call it another great day on the water with a crew I love fishing with while sharing a patch of ocean with dolphins, whales, and other tuna enthusiasts. When tuna fishing recreationally, always remember to take only what you need and no more. These fish are a gift, and this one fish alone blessed us with tuna steaks for our entire team at OTW and our families. <laughs>